Don't you just love it when you sit down to make a awesome new video game cosplay and you realize that, um, Parts of the costume make zero sense when it comes to real world garment construction. Like look at these socks. How in the world are they gonna actually stay up and look like that shape? Now don't get me wrong, I love fantasy costume design, especially in games like Neptunia and Genshin Impact where you have these beautiful details that are so creative. But when you actually sit down to make these costumes for cosplay, it gets pretty tricky and you need to have quite a bit of sewing engineering magic to get it to look just right. That's why in today's creative adventure, I'm gonna be sharing some of the techniques that I find really useful in creating these magic gravity defying garments. For the examples in this video, I'm gonna be specifically focusing on socks and leggings, but all of these techniques can be used anywhere on the garment. And especially if you're working on video game characters, you're gonna be working with a lot of stretch fabrics because they tend to wear fairly tight clothing. Now, when it comes to breaking down the overall pattern and planning your design elements, I find it most helpful to actually make a shell garment. This is just a basic, simple, almost block that you're gonna be using, that you're gonna make out of a material that's very similar to your end materials in terms of stretch. And you're just gonna make up this blank garment and make it out of something light so you can actually mark it with a Sharpie. Now you can go the wrap yourself in saran wrap and cover yourself with tape route, but when you're working with stretch fabric, you wanna take into account negative ease because the stretch of the fabric will actually change how the designs sit on your body. So it's always better to make kind of a shell garment and use that as your mock-up and pattern base. If you need help drafting a perfect fitting legging pattern, I have a video on my channel that you can check out later that'll walk you step-by-step -step through the process. Once I have my shell garment constructed, I put it on and go to town with a Sharpie. This way I can make sure that the pattern aesthetically looks correct on my specific body proportions. And also when the garment gets taken off, the negative ease will already be accounted for in the patterns. Once you've marked up your garment and you're happy with all the designs, you're gonna pick apart your pattern so that it's back into its flat original shape. From here, we're gonna lay our main pattern piece back over top of the fabric pattern and transfer over all of the Sharpie markings to our paper pattern. After this, you can go in with rulers, French curves, stencils, whatever you need, and you can clean up your patterns so they are perfect and spotless. And this becomes my new master pattern. For the actual construction, I'll usually go one of two ways and sometimes do a combination of the two. There's usually either a decal transfer method or an applique method. And feel free to try out both and see what you're comfortable with. For me, it really just depends on the materials, the colors, and the designs that I'm working with. Sometimes it's easier to do transfers, sometimes it's easier to do a mix, and sometimes it's better to just to do applique. For the transfer decal route, you actually want to make sure that the vinyl you're using has stretch to it. Many of the heat transfer vinyls on the market don't actually stretch because they're designed for woven fabrics. The only one that I found that works really well with stretch materials, particularly with spandex and other sports materials, is the Cricut brand Sports Flex Vinyl. To create the decals that I'll need to transfer, I usually use my master pattern as a stencil. I'll take a fresh piece of paper and I'll trace out the patterns that I need for the specific color that I'm working with. If you have an electric cutting machine like a Silhouette or a Cricut or one of the Brother brands or Sizer even, by all means, go for it and use it. I find that sometimes it's just not worth the effort, especially with large, simple, big shapes. I would rather just cut them out and trace around them than have to go in, digitize, and then export to my machine. If you don't have one of those cutting machines, this is a great way to use the heat transfer vinyl without having to invest in an expensive extra machine. When you're tracing the pattern pieces onto the vinyl by hand, make sure you're drawing on the shiny, glossy side of the vinyl, not the kind of matte textured side. The shiny, glossy side is actually the carrier paper that you're gonna be removing after anyway, so it's okay to have Sharpie and pen marks on it.
For positioning my decals, again, I use my master pattern as a stencil. I'll transfer out reference points onto a separate piece of paper, place them onto my pattern piece, and then line up my decals in such a way that it makes sense relative to those stencils. When it comes time to press the decals, I make sure to cover any other decals that I'm working around with parchment paper, or if the material I'm working with has some sort of special effects coating like a wet look or holographic sparkles, I usually put the parchment down anyway on top of the transfer just to protect the fabric. Then I just follow the instructions on the package, press it at a medium high heat, and then wait for it to cool before I peel it back. Once everything's peeled back and cooled off, I actually usually go back again, put a parchment paper on top and repress the vinyl again to make sure it's really, really well fused onto the material. If the vinyl isn't pressed well enough, it will actually peel off of your material when you're wearing it and we don't want that. Now for going the sewn applique route, there's actually kind of two techniques that you can use to create these applique designs. You can work with your fabric as a patch where you place it on top of your base layer, or you can work as a cutaway where you put the fabric underneath and cut the base layer back. The choice between these two is really dependent on your ability to handle the fabric and how small and detailed the things you're trying to attach and do are. If you're working with really fine details or slinky materials, it's often better to do the cutaway method just because there's a bit more stability. If you're using large big patches or the material working with is quite thick and has quite a bit of stability, then it's usually pretty easy to just do the patch method. For the patch method, I again trace off the pieces of my design off of my master pattern and transfer them to the color that I want to create the patch out of. I don't need to add seam allowance in this case because we're just gonna be zigzagging around the edges. When you've got all your patches cut out, you'll wanna secure them down to your base layer so that when you're working with them under the machine, they don't run away and slip. One of the easiest ways to do this is just by using a general purpose washable glue stick that you can find in any dollar or craft store. Simply apply the glue to your patch and then press it down onto your base layer. If you're working with finer details, you can also go and hand baste your pieces down. Just make sure that the hand basting isn't too close to the edge so that it's not as hard to remove after you zigzag. Once you're ready, simply sew over your patch pieces with a narrow zigzag. I use anywhere between three to four millimeters, depending on the detail. Sometimes I'll even go down to two. It really depends on the fabric and the size. Test it out and see what works best. Once you're done, you'll have your patch appliques all ready to go and they should stretch with your base layer. Now for the other type of applique where you're cutting away your base layer, you're gonna wanna transfer your designs from your master pattern onto your base fabric layer. In this case, again, I trace out the details that I want with a stencil and mark it onto my base layer with either a chalk marker or a washable or heat erase pen. Next, I'll cut out a piece of fabric that's bigger than the design that I'm gonna be working with and attach it from behind onto my base material. In this case, you generally don't wanna be using glue, so you'll probably be pinning or hand basting the material in place because you'll wanna be able to separate the two layers to cut the top layer back. Once everything's all secure, as with the previous method, you'll use a narrow zigzag anywhere between two to four millimeters and go and sew along the edges of the patterns you marked. Once that's all done and everything's tied off, you'll wanna carefully pull apart your two different layers of material and make a snip in your top base layer. This will provide you with a little hole for access and you'll use embroidery scissors or applique scissors to cut back your top layer material so that the fabric beneath can be visible. And this creates your cutaway applique. I'll also go back in and also trim away any of the extra material so there's not too much bulk in the seams. And since we're on the topic of cutaway applique, this is a great time to explain how I do cutaway designs from 
the base material when you need to show some skin through like a peak hole of some kind in the design. So if you just cut away the base material and let your skin show through whatever hole you have designed, oftentimes it won't look super great if you just cut the hole because when you stretch your garment over your skin, the design is going to move around and shift, especially if it's got thin points those are going to stretch out and curl up even sometimes. The trick to get this done right is using something called illusion mesh or dance mesh. This material is often used for dance wear, figure skating and gymnastics costumes. It's specifically designed to be invisible on the body. It's super stretchy and comes in usually a beige or a black. You can also find it in white if you need to dye it any other color. To use this material to stabilize any of your cutaway designs, you wanna do the exact same way as your cutaway applique. You'll mark the design you want to cut away and then you'll cut a piece of this mesh that's bigger than the design. Pin it and secure it behind your base fabric and then sew along the edges just as you would with a cutaway. Then once you're ready, carefully separate the two materials and snip into your base layer and cut it back. This will leave just the mesh behind and when you put it on your body, it will be nearly invisible but will hold the shape of the cut so that it looks perfect every time. Illusion mesh is also a great material to layer with other stretch materials like fishnet. This is how I often create the iconic ninja mesh look by layering black illusion mesh with a large fishnet stocking that I cut open. Once all of your decals and applique are attached, you can then just follow your normal steps of putting the leggings together and then you should be done. Now, if you're making socks, however, we have a couple more steps to make it so that you have the perfect pair of socks that won't fall down and will hold their shape perfectly. To do this, we're basically going to follow the same idea as the cutaway mesh applique, but what we're going to do is replace the whole top of the legging with mesh. To do this, you'll first wanna trace your hemline of the top of your sock onto your legging pattern. Again, use your master pattern as a stencil and mark off where you want that final line for the sock to sit. Now for the next step, you can either use illusion mesh as we talked about before, or if you want a little bit of coverage and extra shaping, you can actually go ahead and use power net instead. It's a firmer, thicker, stronger mesh that's often used in bra making and shaper wear. With your mesh of choice ready to go, cut out a piece that's bigger than the remaining top portion of the legging piece that you're going to be replacing. Secure it to your base fabric as we did with cutaway with either pins or basting or whatever works best for you. Then go in on your machine and zigzag stitch along the edge of the final hemline of your sock. Once that's all taken care of, place your pattern piece flat on a nice work surface and cut around the edges to make sure that your mesh now follows the exact same pattern as the legging top. Once everything's ready to go, just simply cut away your base layer at the top to reveal the mesh below. Now you can continue with the construction method for the leggings as you would normally, but now instead of having visible leggings at the top, you'll have just mesh at the top. And when you put them on, it will hold your socks at the perfect level on your leg every time. Now you know all of my techniques for creating gravity-defying socks and really cool decorative leggings. Hopefully this will help you with your next video game cosplay project. Definitely let me know in the comments below what your favorite over-the-top character is and if this technique will help, and I'll see you in the next adventure.